Okay, hi. Yes, we are now continuing on Mac Left Train. This is a video continuing from the previous one. So, let's get watching. So, we have just continued to talk about uh, magnetic forces and how they, we can have applications in our everyday life. So, I want to show you a video about Mac Left and how it works. So, it's not like our MRTs that run on wheels. This one uses um, magnetic forces to actually make it work. So, let's watch the video between the wheels and the track. The solution is to take both these factors out of the equation. It sounds like science fiction, but trains that do just that really exist. And they're called maglev, which stands for magnetically levitating trains. There are no overhead power cables because the power source is built into the track. There's no friction from the wheels because, well, there aren't any wheels. The train is designed to float 10 millimeters above the track so the only resistance it has is air resistance, which makes this train fast, very fast. Here at the Trans Rapid Test Track in northern Germany, they're testing a technology that they hope has the potential to take over where the TGV meets its limits, with enough speed, not just for intercity, but for intercontinental travel. But like so many record-breaking trains of the past, not one, but two rival operations have been battling it out to turn this technology into the world's fastest passenger service. The German Trans Rapid System and the Japanese JR Maglev. Maglev trains are all about magnets. And magnets have two poles, north and south. And when the facing poles of each magnet are the same, like in this instance, north, north, they repel, like so. The Japanese JR maglev system uses this force to lift their trains. Magnets on the train face magnets with similar poles on the track, and the train rests on the repulsive force as if it's sitting on an invisible cushion, like so. Japanese maglev trains have reached speeds in excess of 580 kilometers an hour using okay. this system. I'm going to pause here now, so because if not the video is too long. So that is just a preview about what maglev train is about. So that ends the part on magnetic forces. Okay, so I want to move on to gravitational force. Yes, so this is, if you recall, it's not Isaac Newton, this is just a chicken. And what does a chicken do to a tree that drops? Apples, well, they cut it off. Anyway, so gravitational force, uh, known as gravity, is a force that attracts objects to planets. Okay, so actually everything that has mass has gravity, but you need something to be very, very big, like your planets, in order to see the magnetic, uh, sorry, the gravitational effects. Don't worry, I will explain this more in class if you need me to. Alright, so gravitational field strength is something different. This is represented by G. Uh, so we use G to represent this field strength, and the bigger the value of G, the stronger the gravity. So one of the units that we use for G is Newton per kilogram, or N slash kg, Newton per kg. Alright? So here we have three planets, Moon, the Earth, okay, Moon is not really a planet, so Never mind. The Moon, the Earth, and Jupiter. So the value of the gravitational field strength is also labeled here. For the Moon, because it's small, it's only 1.6. For the Earth, it's rather big. We have 10 Newton per kg. And for Jupiter, which is super huge, we actually have it at 26. So based on the size of the planet, you actually have different gravitational field strength. Now this is important, because I'm going to explain how you use this value to calculate weight. So there is a difference in physics when we talk about, or in science, when we talk about mass and weight. So mass, right, is actually the measure of the amount of substance in the body. So we talk about how much stuff there is. It's different from weight. Weight, we, when we talk about weight, we are talking about a force. Okay, force. So it's not about just amount of matter, it's about force. And so weight is a force. So for mass, it doesn't change. Whether you're on Earth, when you go to the Moon, uh, if you weigh 60 kg on Earth, sorry, if you have a mass of 60 kg on Earth, and you go to the Moon, you'll still be 60 kg. But on, as for weight, it will change depending on the planet you're on. 
So if let's say you're on Earth, you have probably 600 newtons, but on the Moon, you might only weigh 100 newtons. So you will change. So yes, you've heard me say uh, mass, I, it measures in kg. In, for weight, you measure in newtons. So this is different from how every day when we talk about mass and weight. Usually we go to PE and then we say, oh, so I weigh 50 kg. But this is not accurate, uh, not correct in, in, in science. In science, when we talk about kilograms, it refers to mass. When we talk about weight, it, we are using newtons. So it's different. So think about that. Okay, for mass, we use a beam balance. For weight, we use you know, a spring balance. So it's different. Okay, so in the previous part of the notes, you have went through compression spring balance and extension spring balance. So those are different. Uh, but they are, belong to the spring balance category. All right. So what does it all mean? So like I said, if you met, if you, your mass is 60 kg, your mass will be the same no matter which planet you're on. However, if your weight uh, will change, your weight will change. On the moon, you will weigh lesser than on Earth because the gravity of the moon is weaker. Okay. So now this is the important part of this uh, lesson. You need to understand the formula. The formula is goes by W equals to m g or m times g, which means weight equals to mass times gra gravitational field strength. Weight is measured in newtons, as you mentioned. Mass is measured in kg. Gravitational field strength is measured in newton per kg. So please take note that they are the different units for each quantity. So you have this triangle here. You probably seen it in distance, speed, and time. You can use this here, okay, to help you understand. So, for example, if I want to find mass, I cover my mass. I have weight divided by g to find my mass. All right. So let's look at what the formula means and what we have been learning so far. So if my mass is sixty kg, how much do I weigh on the moon, on Earth, on Jupiter? I want to take some time to think about it now. Alright, so let's look at the first one. We have this table to help us. So if my mass is 60 kg on Earth, okay, I will get weight 600 newtons. How do I do that? I take mass 60 times my gravitational field strength, which is 10. 60 times 10 gives me 600. So this is my formula. W equals to mass times gravity. So 600 is equal to 60 times 10. So now, if I have my mass is 60 on Earth, what will it be on Moon and Jupiter? You are right. Okay, my mass will not change, so my mass will remain at 60. But how do I get the weight? I will take W equals mg, so mass times 1.6, I get 96. So same thing here, if I go to Jupiter, my mass remains the same. To get weight, I take 60 times 26, I get 1560. So this is how I calculate weight and mass. Right? So take some time to think about this if you need repeat, uh, rewind and, and repeat this section again so that you can understand better. If you still have difficulty, you can ask me in class. Okay, the final part of gravitational force is on ocean tides. So if you go to the beach, uh, whether pastries or east coast, you'll see that the sea level doesn't stay uh, at a place at a certain height all the time. It, it rises and it falls. So what causes this rise and fall of, of, the, of the sea? Okay, this is due, due to the moon's gravity. So if the moon is here and the earth is here, actually the water will be slightly attracted, will be attracted here. So most of the water will stay here, so that's why this part and this part will have actually lesser water. So that causes your water tide to actually go down at certain places and go up at certain places. Okay, so that ends uh, this lesson on lesson notes two on uh, frictional force, magnetic force, and gravitational force. All right, so for the next video, we're going to lesson three. So I'll see you in the next video.